The Longest Flight Project is a very, very unique project. It's actually the first time that a 1943 fully refurbished Spitfire will attempt to fly around the world and certainly circumnavigate the planet in over 120 stopovers in about four months. The Spitfire is a short-range interceptor aircraft that was never designed for long-range flying and it was definitely not designed with passenger comfort in mind. So you can imagine uh, making that fit for purpose when you're in freezing temperatures, crossing a lot of bodies of water, uh, that is quite a challenge in itself. There are many countries the Spitfire has never ever been to where there's absolutely no spare part supply, fuel supply, and you have to plan that all way in advance and get the landing rights to be able to pull off an expedition like that. We are at Goodwood and uh, we have uh, had this amazing event uh, to help launch the longest flight, which is uh, being supported by IWC. One of the perks of the job of being an ex Grand Prix driver and having this wonderful brand association with IWC is I've just had the opportunity to go on a two-seater Spitfire. It has been a very long time since I did something for the first time, but I think that by association, I can feel part of this amazing journey for a Spitfire to fly around the, the, the world it has never been done before. And of course, it will be done, it, it, but it will be done in the spirit of adventure. We as IWC are ideally placed because we've been making precision instruments for aviation ever since 1936. And we like to tell stories that are all about engineering and adventure. And for us, there was nothing better than this project uh, conceived by Matt and Steve, who really wanted to make that engineering dream come true, tell an engineering and design story about the Spitfire. Good would all these worlds come together because it's the home of motor racing, and especially classic motor racing, and the home of aviation. This used to be an RAF base in the Second World War, West Hemnet. Uh, from here, uh, fighter aces such as Douglas Bader, he flew his last wartime mission from here in a hurricane. And you have this historic airfield in this unique context that really talks all about what aviation was in back in the day, all the heritage and history, but it's really a modern working place and racetrack and airfield. And that for us is the absolute perfect home base to tell the story of the Spitfire. Well, my experience of pilots and racing drivers is that they're actually risk averse. They're, they're not risk takers. They understand the engineering challenges, they understand the mechanical s sympathy that you need to either drive a racing car or to fly an aircraft. And you trust in your team. And it's so important to, to trust in the designers, to, tr to trust in the mechanics. And I have this very simple theory that great design is timeless. I think they're feeling really confident now that it's actually starting. I think the planning, you have two things. You have, first of all, you have all the training for all the eventualities, making sure, mitigating the risks and making sure that the training is really perfect. And on the other hand, there's a huge amount of administration to be done to be able to have the landing permits in all these different countries, fulfill all the regulations, make sure all those checks are being done. So to finally now get to the starting line, I think they felt a lot calmer once they were in the cockpit, strapped in, and they can focus on the job they've been training so hard to do. I just feel to, you know, proud to be part of this celebration of them going off on this journey. Of course it's a huge challenge, of course it's taken more work than anyone might have expected, but I think this is a perfect celebration of human endeavour.